That's no. a doozy. Yo, you look, <laughs> you look like Michelangelo from the new TMN. Yo, chill out, because everybody kept <laughs> saying that to me, man. I'm Joshua Perry. I'm here with my guy, Kenny Bell. For our last iteration of the replies for this year, I'm going to miss it. Kenny, it's been fun working with you. Uh, let's give him something good to start off with. Trey Sermon, how about that? This guy is absolutely ridiculous. Had himself a day. He was kind of coming along, transferred into Ohio State, getting really used to the system and decided that he was going to make his best game the big one and help the Buckeyes to a conference championship victory. Man, this dude looked good the entire night throughout this big uh, 10 championship. He was hurtling people, running people over. Just an absolute monster to break a guy like, I mean, obviously Zeke is the man and had a tremendous career, but to go after Eddie George's uh, all-time rushing yards is just incredible. So a tip of the cap without a doubt to Mr. Sermon. Yeah, I think it was, it was, like I said, the timing was right for him to have this game because people had kind of been wondering, you know, what was – what was Trey Sermon's ability level? You know, he's beat up. He was coming in as a transfer guy, and he answered any question anybody might have had about him. Hell of a performance. JP, sticking with the Big Ten Championship game, let's talk about Brandon Joseph's INT in the end zone. And this man pulls in, in my opinion, the best interception of the year. And of course, Gus Johnson, my favorite, my favorite announcer, had the best call for it. Uh, just, a, just an incredible play by a guy that has been making these interceptions throughout the entire season look easy. Yeah, first off, Gus is the man. It's just some of the best calls in in, in college football. But uh, Brandon Joseph, I mean, it's the reason why he's the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. The reason why that defense was really strong in the back end. They had a bunch of players making plays, but Brandon Joseph did this all year. And the thing you cannot account for, and Kenny, you would know this playing wide receiver, is a guy making a play like that. Like, you know, yeah. tip balls, it is what it is. A guy gets an interception that's kind of thrown to him. That kind of stuff happens. The one-handed interception when you've got tight coverage on a guy and the quarterback tries to put it somewhere where only his receiver can catch it, it's the thing you cannot account for, and that's what great players do. Man, it's disrespectful, honestly, JP. I mean, the amount of talent it takes to play cornerback, I have always had a lot of respect for those guys. I don't like them, personally. Uh, <laughs> but the amount of talent it takes to play the position to cover a man, but then to be able to make plays on the football, uh, that, that's just another type of athlete. And uh, Brandon Joseph is one of those type of athletes. Absolutely. How about this crazy interception, Christian Izian, in his Champions Week matchup versus Nebraska? The Rutgers defensive back was taking the ball away, uh, doing a hell of a job with that. But again, going up straight off the vert, one hand. <laughs> Man. I feel like they're making these athletes a little bit different. It wasn't that long ago that I was playing ball, but these cats are built different, KB. Man, I've been saying this for a while, and I always think it's funny when people are like, oh, you know, back in the 80s, it was a lot better at ball. And I, I'm just like, what? You see, <laughs> you see these 13 year olds like in middle school doing windmill dunks and one handed backflip catches. Uh, you're, there's something to be said about the, the talent level and the athleticism from this younger generation because it's outstanding, man. You, you see just top 10, top five catches. I mean, in every single game, you see two or three of them a game now, it seems like. And here's a perfect example of another one in a wild game that a dude had. That was just one of his three interceptions. Great, great football game. Kenny, let me let me say this. Back in the 80s, man, nobody could even move fast because the damn pads were so big. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know how if look, you and you're 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 a lightweight guy too. I'm not trying to offend here, but imagine putting them big old pads on and then trying to run your best 40 on a vertical route. It ain't here's happening. The, here's the thing, JP. I would have never wanted to play in the 70s and eight and eighties because those dudes were different in a diff like in a toughness, rough, kind of just no just reckless abandon kind of way and compared to now where the athleticism the talent level is so high these kids have been you know running ladders since they were four years old um it, it's just a different breed that that's for sure yeah and jp speaking of that scarlet knights versus corn huskers game we head to adrian martinez's comments afterwards i gave adrian martinez the hard hat and lunch pail award on uh, the btn tailgate show i i love this dude i love the way he approaches the game i love the way he approaches his day and the way he treats people this is really just a another sign of what type of man this this dude's gonna be um just a, a great great quote from after the game and the way he responded to the adversity and all the you know 
stones being thrown from glass houses uh, out there. I, I got a lot of love and a lot of respect uh, for Adrian Martinez, and I think he has a very bright future. I agree, and, and, and he's going to do well at whatever he wants to do because of the mentality that you talked about and the attitude. You think about what he went through this year, you know, coming into the season, coach didn't really give the vote of confidence about the starting quarterback position, and then there was a battle that went on, and then they started Luke McCaffrey, so somebody else is in the game, and he's got to sit back, and he's got to make sure that he's still a good teammate for the starting quarterback who took his job and the rest of his teammates that look up to him. And then he comes back and he's balling. You know, he gets another opportunity and takes advantage of it. And like he said, far from perfect, but he fought and that team fought, which I have a lot of appreciation for. And, and I'll, I'll leave on this one. Uh, highlight of that game for me was him cutting his sleeves off after he fumbled twice. <laughs> <laughs> Ball security, man. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. And JP, you made some really good points. I mean, football is such a microcosm of life. Uh, you talk about, you know, the ebbs and flows of lives. There's going to be mountaintops and valley lows. And the way you respond to them is really what it's all about. And the way this young man responded to everything that he went through during his Husker career, um, he's, he's going to be successful. I have no doubt in my mind. We head out to the axe game between Wisconsin and Minnesota. And Badgers get to keep the axe. They've had it, was it 16 out of the last 17? So it's yes. been a little while. Since um, 1968. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chill out. So one of the things I appreciate about Big Ten football is uh, some of these trophy games. You know, we got gray skies around here. It's not necessarily the most fun place to be during the fall and winter. And so you add some of these trophies to the games. I think they become a little bit interesting, but my experience with trophy games personally Ohio State and Illinois, we have this wooden turtle and it's about as cool as it sounds. It's a wooden turtle. So I wish we had something a little bit, you know, more robust like an ax, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love the idea of the axe. That axe is sweet. They cut down the field goal post with it. Like, I love the ideas. You made you made a good point. I think it speaks to the pride and tradition of Big Ten football or Big Ten sports in general. Uh, for me, uh, the trophy game, I think, was the Heroes game against Iowa. And I had just moved to Iowa. I, You know, I didn't have that burning hatred for the Hawkeyes when I was in school. I didn't really uh, uh, to have rivalries or trophy games thrust upon you. Some of them are great. Some of them uh, I don't understand necessarily, <laughs> uh, but they, they're they having fun. You know, getting the W is the most important thing to end the season. So hats off to them. <laughs> JP, I know you'll like this one. Daniel Barker with the twerk team in the end zone, <laughs> looking like Key and Peele, looking like Antonio Brown. Uh, I recommend not doing that in the end zone. It's not something that I would do, but hey, have some fun, young man. Have some fun. Yeah. It, uh, definitely having fun uh if i had to to grade just the overall uh performance the technique the delivery i would say about an a minus he was he was definitely committed to it but i don't i think he was a little bit apprehensive about taking it all, all the way there like he was excited to do it but you could tell maybe he was a little bit guarded but for him last game of the year go ahead and have a little bit of fun I love the analytics of the twerk, bro. That's a uh, <laughs> man's dedicated to his job. Look, they pay me to be an analyst over here, so I'm gonna analyze it all. <laughs> Gotta give a shout out to my guy, Dave Revson, one of the great studio hosts here at BTN, uh, calling out Dabo Swinney in his um, BS with the coaches poll. And it's not like any of this matters and everything's gonna get sorted out on the football field, but quite disrespectful to say that the team you're getting ready to play in the semifinal game you think is the 11th best team in the nation also in my opinion quite stupid to say so because i'm not exactly sure you could go down that list and say that ohio state would lose to all those teams ahead of them but go off you got yeah. it Dabo. i mean i feel like Dabo is always kind of saying tongue in the cheek kind of stuff and getting away with it uh, good on good on Dave for calling this out because I mean and what a bold strategy to do this leading up to the college football playoff I mean you're gonna see them you had to have known if you're Dabo you had to have known that you're gonna see them in some regard and if you didn't know that that's not great but if you did you know you're <laughs> uh, you're confident to say the least so I, I can't wait for they, they, they play in the Sugar Bowl right and um, yeah. 
I'm really looking forward to that one because I think we're in for a barn burner. <laughs> it, it'll definitely be interesting. And, and, and to play a little bit of defense for Dabo, you know, these coaches nationally have been talking about how the Big Ten didn't play as many games. And, you know, you can lose games over the stretch of a longer season, which I understand. But that 11, that, 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 that number is probably going to pop up on game day one way or another. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I feel them on not as many games played, but college football coaches know college football know. teams. You know, they know. Uh, if they would, if he would have put them at six, seven, you know, but to throw them outside the top ten, and then like put a team, and I've got a lot of respect for Coastal. I got a lot of respect for Cincy. I've got a lot of respect for Tamu, uh, but to throw them in front of all those teams, and you know, I think. I think there is something to be said about the intentions of that one. Not not necessarily uh, the best. Three lost Florida sitting there at number five. He lost all credibility with me. I'm going to just throw that out there. I, I, I got to get off of my soapbox. I'm not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Whew. That's yo, a doozy. Yo, you look, <laughs> you look like Michelangelo from the new TMN. Yo, chill out, because everybody kept <laughs> saying that to me, man. I, I look, I look just like my father, hey, James hey, Perry. Shout to be, out to my dad. To be, to be fair, JP, if they put up my combine photo, like the one just of me, not not working out, just like you know your headshot. Yeah, it is. I kid you not, the worst photo of me that's ever been taken. Like I'm, I'm not, gonna just say this. At I'm least I look swole because <laughs> that, that 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 body wasn't doing it for me. You got the combine body going, bro. I do. Jeez. Man, the meat got to got to look good at the meat market.